Thank you for coming to the employment seminar today. Um, my name is Ryan Burgos. I am the National Employment Director for Disabled American Veterans. Um, before we begin the seminar, uh, I would like to introduce some guests that are in the house today from our Interim Employment Committee. If you guys could please stand and be, be recognized. And then also we have uh, our strategic partner, uh, Recruit Military, here in the house. If you guys could please, please also stand. Well, again, thank you for coming to the seminar this morning. I would like to first introduce our special guest of the morning. Um, his name is Mr. Julian Purdy. And he, he is the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Policy for, of Veteran Employment and Training Service in the Department of Labor. Julian has over 12 years of service working for and in the federal government. As a former Ar Army NCO, he is truly dedicated to public service and to the betterment of our nation's heroes. Everybody, please welcome Mr. Julian Purdy. All right. First, I want to give uh, thanks to Ryan for reading my short version of the bio. Appreciate that. I could have been here for a little while. Uh, so I'm really happy that I'm here, and I really want to thank the DEV national leadership and all the veterans and family members in attendance today. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to participate in the 101st DAV National Convention and provide you with some information about vets, who we serve, and what our priorities are. I'm also thankful for the service of the 1 million DAV members across the nation and the great work that you do in support of service members, their families, and veterans of all generations. We know that this is a team effort to serve the employment needs of our veterans, transitioning service members, and military spouses, and I'm grateful for DAV's support and partnership. And while we appreciate the support of the entire DAV family and team, I would like to give a special acknowledgement to the vision and leadership of a few folks, such as the National Commander, Joe Parsinovich, the National Adjunct, Barry Jesenowski, the National Executive Director, Cody Van Voxel, the executive director in Washington, Randy Reese, and one of VET's very own, the third junior vice commander, Joe Donovan. Where are you at, Joe? I think you're in here somewhere. All right, there he is back there. And so I have the very distinct honor uh, to be representing the Department of Veterans, Veterans Employment and Training Service and serving there for over two and a half years in this administration. And our VETS team consists of over 2,800 federal and state staff, contractors, and grantees. And last year, we collectively served over 441,000 veterans and military spouses across all of our agency's programs. We have, state, we have staff in every state across the country. We have we fund over 1,500 veteran reps in the American Job Centers, which include over 1,000 disabled veteran outreach program specialists. We have 400 contractors supporting the employment workshops at over 200 installations worldwide for nearly 200,000 transitioning service members on an annual basis. And we have over 150 grantees supporting our Homeless Veterans Reintegration Program. We have a committed and passionate team. I'm a proud Army veteran, as Ryan read earlier today, and I like to say that the Army is the best branch. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad we have unanimous, unanimous consent on that. I heard no dissenting views as I said that, so I appreciate it. And I have to say that over 96% of the VET staff are veterans serving veterans. And a large percentage of those veterans are actually service-connected veterans, to include myself. And even though we have 96% who are veterans, the other 4% also are those who are supporting veterans as spouses, as children, as parents of veterans also. No, so we appreciate the service that 
veterans have done to our country, and we understand how important it is to support these veterans as they transition out of the military and beyond. And in fact, at VETS, our mission is to enable all veterans, transitioning service members, military spouses to reach their full potential in the workforce. And during my time at VETS, we've actually modified that vision statement to ensure that we include military spouses and, and all reservists and National Guards. Because as a reservist myself, I understand how sometimes there are programs and services that component two and three have unequal eligibility requirements and sometimes are actually just left out of. So I've made that my personal choice to make sure we include those folks. And so as our nation moves beyond the pandemic, it's good to see that the veteran unemployment rate has gone back to what it was before COVID. As of July, the veterans unemployment rate is 2.8%, which is still below the full unemployment rate of 3.4% nationally. And so while that rate is pretty low and back to pre-pandemic levels, we still have to do more for our underserved veteran communities who are experiencing a higher unemployment rate. Uh, for example, the unemployment rate for Gulf War II veterans with service-connected service disabilities is actually has gone up, and we have to do something about that. We have seen numbers that show that those with 60% or more of a disability rating have a specifically lower participation rate in the workforce at 66%, while compared to veterans who have a disability rating of 30% and their participation in the workforce is 95%. So there is a discrepancy there. We've noticed it, and we have to do more research to figure out where other discrepancies exist and how we can combat them. So therefore, we look at promoting and advancing equity, inclusion, accessibility for our underserved veteran communities, such as disabled veterans, as a key priority for our agency. But we also have to look at how we're supporting veterans of color, those in rural communities, Native American communities, LGBTQ plus communities, justice involved, and others who have been historically underrepresented. Every veteran deserves a good job with family sustaining wages and the opportunity to establish generational wealth and the well-being for themselves and their family. There's a lot of focus on veteran resiliency and suicide, and rightly so. We recognize that meaningful employment facilitates social connectiveness, a sense of purpose, and financial stability, all key factors of resiliency. But at times, the broken narrative, I mean, so the broken veteran narrative is more frequent and louder than veteran accomplishments and value in our workforce and our communities. I speak to a lot of employers and share this narrative which also goes to a lot of the data that shows that veterans outperform their non-veteran peers in the workforce. And so we have seen that hiring veterans is a good business decision. And while it sounds great for me in my position to say that, we have numbers to actually back that up. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, veterans have a lower employment rate and a higher labor participation rate than their non-veteran peers. Pew Research says that veterans have a 17% higher standard of living than their non-veterans over the last 40 years. And post 9-11 veterans earn more than those who have never served in the armed forces, according to the US uh, Census Bureau. These numbers speak for themselves. However, this narrative needs to be told. We have to say this more often and more loudly that hiring veterans is a good business decision. Service to our nation in uniform facilitates, as many people know, better long-term employment outcomes than those who don't serve. This message is essential for the sustainment of our all volunteer force as well. As you've been reading, recruitment has been very challenging as of lately, and most services are on track to meet their annual goals. DOD has recently shared that about 23% of 17 to 24 year olds would not even qualify for the military today. 
And then if you combine that between 180,000 and 200,000 service members leave the active duty every year, we see ourselves at a precipice that we must face. Financial stability is a key factor in how many folks leave the military. Reenlistment and continuing to serve in uniform is a family decision. Our military families and spouses have a big vote, especially with the new blended retirement system where service members don't have to stay in for 20 years to receive some form of payment out in the pension. And our military spouses are extremely educated and a talented force, often more educated than their veteran and military spouses themselves. According to BLS, military spouses earn 38% less than civilian spouses' counterparts. To me, that's a problem. And also, they experience 21% unemployment rate. So while I'm not a, a mathematician by any means, you know, those numbers speak volumes about we have a problem in our nation about hiring and retaining military spouses in our civilian workforce. And so on June 9th, 2023, President Biden signed an executive order to ensure that the federal government is an employer of choice for military and veteran spouses, as well as caregivers and survivors by strengthening the ability for the executive departments and agencies to recruit, hire, develop, promote, and retain this skilled and diverse pool of talent. And in support of this executive order and the fiscal year 24 presidential budget, VETS as an agency is seeking to expand eligibility for the uniform services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act to ensure that military spouses have anti-discrimination protection within the workforce as well. Increasing employment opportunities and protections for military spouses will help retain members of the armed forces, enhance our military readiness, and will allow employers to tap into a pool of talented individuals while sustaining the all-volunteer force and the well-being of our military families. The current labor dynamics indicate that workers are seeking better opportunities with increased wages, benefits, and flexibility to provide security and spend more time with their families. A clear path to good jobs is through registered apprenticeships to include these high demand industries that allow such opportunities, such as cybersecurity, the defense industrial base, clean energy, semiconductors, transportation, and union jobs in construction. VETS is currently working closely with these industries to create clear pathways for veterans and military spouses. This is why another one of VETS' priorities is to leverage partnerships to maximize employment outcomes. And these partners include our Department of Labor teammates, such as the Employment and Training Administration, federal agency partners at DOD and VA, the Small Business Administration and others, and our close relationship with the state workforce agencies are truly crucial since we have a number of key partners that will help us extend and be a force multiplier for our efforts. We also have a number of key partners to include our grantees for the Homeless Veterans Reintegration Program, veteran service organizations such as DAV, labor unions, nonprofits, and private sector entities focused on veteran employment. And of course, the employers and industry associations leaning forward to hire veterans and military spouses. Getting the military to civilian employment transition right continues to be a VETS focus. And I'm excited about our recent transition assistance program initiatives to include the Employment Navigator and Partnership Pilot, also known as EMPP, this is our first program to provide one-on-one -on -one career assistance to interested transitioning service members and their spouses outside of the traditional TAP classroom setting. This program is currently at 29 military installations worldwide. And VETS has partnered with high caliber employment and training organizations from the public and private sector that focus on apprenticeship, digital matching, 
placement services, employment mentorship, and wraparound services, to name a few. In fact, one of our first partners in this program was Recruit Military, who's sitting right here in the second row. And so far to date, nearly 12,000, to include 750 military spouses, have received services from our employment navigators. And I'm also excited to talk about our efforts in our off-base transitioning training pilot, also known as OBTT, which kicked off last year. This is an opportunity for veterans, National Guard, and reservists, including their spouses, to attend employment workshops in their local communities. The 10 two-hour workshops are in-person and virtual to help facilitate a busy lifestyle. Attendees can mix and match their workshops to meet their employment goals and attend at their own pace. OBTT is off to a great start at our five initial pilot states in California, Pennsylvania, Texas, Massachusetts, and North Carolina. To date, over 5,500 participants have attended over 3,100 workshops in those five states. And we received many compliments from participants who found that the training was very useful and led to employment. And as we continue to grow and evolve this program, we will also greatly appreciate any feedback we receive as we further evolve and customize this program to meet the demands of our participants. Soon, we, we plan to extend to at least 20 states across the nation in our efforts to roll out this program. And so we're thankful for DAV's efforts to promote this program via your networks and membership. And VETS has also launched a career workshop for transitioning military spouses, known as the Transition Employment Assistance for Military Spouses Teams. And so the Teams workshops are designed to help military spouses plan and prepare for their job search in pursuit of their employment goals. In fiscal year to date, we have had over 1,500 military spouses attend these workshops. We are also continuing to develop and implement the Wounded Warrior and Caregiver Employment Workshop. And that is specifically designed to address the employment needs of wounded warriors. This has been developed in coordination with the Department of Labor's Office of Disability uh, Employment Policy, the VA, and various service organizations, veteran service organizations and stakeholders. The curriculum is focused on job accommodation resources so wounded warriors are able to realize their full potential in the workplace despite the injuries they may have received while in service. This workshop blends learning delivery that includes instructor-led virtual sessions and is designed to meet the needs of transitioning service members where they may be wounded, ill, or injured. In fiscal year to date, we've nearly had 12,000 participants in this program alone. The military to civilian transition is challenging for most. Getting this transition right focuses on getting that good employment outcome and resiliency that veterans and their families have. And this is why the Transition Assistance Program remains and always will be a top priority for vets. And so in closing, I want to make it clear that the veterans team, the vets team is committed to employing and enabling all veterans, service members, and military spouses to reach their full potential in the workplace. Successful employment outcomes for our veterans and military spouses is fundamental for maintaining our all-volunteer force, and it is the right thing to do for those who step forward to serve our nation. Soon, uh, we don't have it up right now, but we're going to put up a contact us slide. Oh. Thank you. For, thank you for that. And I appreciate the continued collaboration and partnership with DAV and Vets. I appreciate being with here with you today. And thank you for all your efforts to advocate for and support those in uniform, veterans, and their military families. Thank you.
Thank you, Julian. We, uh, so again, my name is Ryan Burgos. I want to go over a couple of items with you guys just to inform everybody about how our, the state of our national employment program. Uh, we are a very small team, but we are a mighty team. We've got four, four individuals that are there, hopeful to get an additional uh, assistant director here in the near future. Uh, however, uh, we have Mr. Jeremy Yost. He is going to be speaking here in a few moments. He is the uh, assistant national employment director. We also have Mr. Anthony Pruitt, who's our employment specialist. Uh, and then we have Ms. Deanna Stouffer, who's our uh, support staff there in the office. We, we pride ourselves in the fact that whenever service members are coming off of active duty, it's a very stressful time for them. But we pride ourselves in the fact that we're a one-stop shop. There's more to separating off active duty than filing claims for disability. It's vitally important that to continue to be a provider for their family, they need meaningful employment opportunities. And that's where DAV steps up to the plate again. And we hold numerous job fairs all over the country. We work directly with disabled veteran um, outreach program specialists and <clears throat> to include uh, local veteran employment representatives as well. Uh, we work directly with employers to ensure that they've got all the benefits needed to sustain a, a veteran workforce, to include employee resource groups, and <clears throat> they can get assistance from us at any point in time by reaching out directly to our office via our website or, or our, um, our contact information on a consistent basis. We also will hold different webinars with employers, again, just, just as another resource to educate them on the importance of hiring disabled veterans. <clears throat> so our employment program began in 2014 with our strategic partner, Recruit Military. So next year we are coming up on a decade of service. And again, that was a very strategic partner because we know what our strong suits are, which is assisting veterans when it comes to claims for disabilities and volunteer hours and things of that nature. However, when it comes to the employment space, we needed a partner that could go the extra mile on our side with us. So again, that's where Recruit Military has come in and really been that strategic partner. We also have Hiring America who assists us in creating videos and putting, us, putting our name out there when it comes to uh, Armed Forces Network, um, local news stations. As, as soon as, the, the problem is education is everything. You don't know what you don't know. So if we can get in on the bases and visit with separating service members and their spouses and give them that piece of education, it's gonna go, it's gonna go a really long way. So on our website, jobs.dav.org, we've got a multitude of resources there to include a job board with over 290,000 vacancies nationwide. And <clears throat> on that website as well, we've got a complete list of our job fairs that are coming nearly everywhere. So this year, we, we're, gonna, we're proud to say that we've got over, 100, uh, over 117, 107 career fairs that is both virtual and in person. Um, and I personally like the virtual environment. Um, not only do we have one tomorrow, a virtual event, but these virtual events, individuals have the ability to, instead of walking from booth to booth, they're able to actually um, click on which booth they want to go to. Employers can see them, they can see the employers, on-the-spot interviews can happen, on-the-spot hiring can happen. It's a really awesome environment to actually be a part of. Individuals, and also just so everybody knows, I mean, just because it's a virtual event does not mean that it's only remote opportunities. There are in-person opportunities as well. And I think that's one, one thing that we see at job fairs whenever we're there or whenever we're just talking to people, they say, well, I don't want to attend a virtual event because I want to work in person. I don't want a remote job. I mean, I'm kind of similar. I don't want to work at home either. I'd rather be in the office and actually see people and engage with people. However, you know, our virtual environments are awesome because, <clears throat> excuse me, you're, these, are, these are locations where people can actually go into the office every single day. And this is just a, an image of our job boards that's on our website. Again, it's, you don't have to log in. You don't have to do anything. You visit jobs.dav.org. Simple to use. You plug in something, a job that you're looking for. If you're looking for a human resources manager, a project manager, you plug that in along with your zip code. You have the ability to look within a 25-mile radius of your home. 
and hundreds of jobs normally pop up depending on what you're looking for. Uh, and they're all hyperlinked directly to Recruit Military's website where you have the ability to see all the, the requirements for the position. You can also apply for the, that job just with a simple click of a button. So it's an awesome resource to just to show a veteran or their spouse, you know, hey, look, this is so easy. Here, let me, let me show you this. Let me literally blow your mind on how easy this tool is to use. <clears throat> we also have our, our Patriot Employer Program. Our Patriot Employer Program, as you guys might have seen, we recognized a few businesses on stage yesterday along with uh, the DVOP and Lever of the Year. And this program has the ability to, um, excuse me, we have the ability to issue a digital badge to uh, employers. We do this on a monthly basis and it, it's all about spreading awareness because we know when employer, when a veteran or a spouse was looking for a job sees that DAV stamp of approval at the bottom, they know that that's an organization they, go, they can go to and trust and they can have a meaningful career. Not just a job to hold you over but somewhere you can stay for a long period of time. So through this program, you know, we, we have the ability to recognize numerous companies throughout the year. But just to give you guys a little more information, I want to show you guys a short video real quick. DAV has long been devoted to helping veterans with everything from benefits assistance to job opportunities and more. And now through their Patriot Employer Program, DAV is recognizing those companies doing their part to help our nation's defenders find meaningful employment and provide a working environment that understands and appreciates veterans. We're here at Disabled American Veterans. We feel it's very important to ensure that our nation's heroes leave active duty service with meaningful employment. One way that we do that is highlighting companies that go above and beyond when it comes to not only hiring veterans, but also retaining those veterans. The Patriot Employer Program was implemented in October of 2021. We wanted it to go out to all entities, no matter their size, so we recognize small, medium, and large employers. And then we have subcategories for companies that are very good in specific areas, whether it be hiring, career building, community involvement, and community support, which is a nice thing to do. We want to recognize as many companies as we can that are hiring veterans and their spouses. Here at DAV, we make sure we vet each application that comes in. So that way, when other organizations and other veterans see that DAV stamp of approval, they know that because it's coming from a prolific service organization like our own, um, that they can trust that organization and they know that, well, you know, DAV is giving their seal of approval, it must be somewhere that we can go to not only find employment, but we can find our next career move, not just a job to hold us over. Anyone can nominate a company, whether that's an employee or somebody outside the company that knows what the company is doing in regards to hiring veterans. Under the Patriot Employer Program, we're not just restricted to three awards for small, medium, and large. We want to be able to offer the employers that are nominated a digital badge showing that, yes, they hire veterans and spouses. Applying for the Patriot Award qualified us for the Employer of the Year Award, and we were very proud to receive the Patriot Award from the DAV, and we were notified that we actually won the Employer of the Year Award be recognized by the DAV is just amazing, uh, knowing all the work that they do and, and all the accomplishments that they have on a daily basis to be partnered with them is just, it, it's, it's awesome on behalf of WPS. We put in two years ago for the first DAV award, which was the Small Business DAV Employer of the Year Award, and we felt incredibly privileged that we won that. And then this year we won the DAV Career Advancement Award. Veterans looking for work when they come to your organization the DAV award lets them know that this is a place that respects their values, their mindset, their work ethics, and their desires to advance in a career. Just even the Patriot Employer Award is a door and it shows that your door is open and it truly means that the business is, is open to you as a veteran and it's not the, the the typical hurdles that you may have to cross. You know, you might you might be teaching that company some things and they're ready and willing to learn or they're already at that stage and the doors open regardless for you to come in. So either way, it's a, it's a ready place for you. I encourage everyone to apply and nominate their companies for hiring veterans. Hiring veterans is beneficial for the employer and to the veteran. And we hope that the Patriot Employer Program encourages more companies to hire even more veterans.
that being said, I encourage everyone, please go home, go to patreonemployer.org, nominate a business so we can get more veterans hired. It's vitally important to end uh, veteran unemployment. This is just a small piece. You know, we, uh, every, every step we take just chips off another, another piece. So it is vitally important that we get many veterans hired. Uh, so I, from now, I would like to introduce our Assistant National Employment Director, Mr. Jeremy Yost, Marine Corps veteran. So please come up here. <laughs> I would say, I would, sorry, I am standing, my apologies. I would say the Marine Corps is the best branch, but yeah, some are, yeah, now we got some negative Nancys. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna go over is the Veterans Advantage Program. So when it comes to hiring veterans, it's not the only thing that we wanna do. We wanna also tell these companies on how to hire veterans, retain them, and also before recruit them as well. So just because they hire them is not where we want to stop. We want to make sure that those individuals continue to have gainful employment and also have that career as well. So our Veterans Advantage Program, the DAV Guide to Retaining and Hiring Veterans with Disabilities, was launched in 2018. Uh, we have a 44-page booklet that is free to anyone to be able to read. All they have to do is go on to jobs.dav.org Click on the hiring guide and you can download it immediately. You can also provide it to companies that you know that are lo looking to hire veterans as well. So I'm gonna go a little more in depth on our job fairs. So our, as Ryan stated earlier, uh, we started in 2014 with our DAV partner, uh, Recruit Military. We, currently this year, we have done 90, well, we will do, my apologies, 90 in-person job fairs this year and 18 virtual. Now this ranges across the entire country. Now we do have additional resources like resume, uh, tips for resume writing, uh, interview tactics and other things on top of that on our website include mentors that can help you as well. Uh, Recruit Military, our partner, also has tools and resources on their website that can help you throughout the process. Next thing, job fairs. Um, when you go onto our website and click on the job fairs tab, you're going to see all the job fairs that are coming in the next month to two months, depending on when it is updated. Now it's updated every few weeks, so anything that is adjusted, if we have a new one or one comes off, we will get that updated as soon as possible. All the ones in red are virtual. All the ones in black are in person. So if somebody's looking to do a virtual event, we advise them to look for the red ones. If they're looking to go in person, go to the black ones. Now when it comes to it, all you have to do is hit the register now, type in and log into our, your recruit military profile, and you can register for that event. Ryan stole my thunder a little earlier. We did a, we're doing 108 job fairs total this year. Again, 90 in person, 18 virtual. The 24 uh, schedule is now completed. It will be updated soon. Estimated around 99 events next year, but we'll have additional ones put on there throughout the year. During our 18 virtual job fairs, these are hosted online, so you can log in on at home, you don't have to go anywhere, and you're able to talk to all these employers while you're on there. These are different from the traditional because it, it gives the opportunity to locate and apply for jobs no matter where the veteran lives or serves. You can find out about all of our job fairs on all of our links, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Every single week we are updating with the new job fairs that we have coming that week. So just wanted to highlight some of the numbers that we have for this year, uh, for since 2014, my apologies. Uh, job fairs, we've been to 925 job fairs across country. We've had over 290,000 attendees. Exhibitors, over 47,000. The two numbers that we see that are huge is DAV interviews, 135,000 interviews that have been done on the spot at job fairs. And jobs offered 174,867 uh, job offers extended out to individuals. Now you see, 
You can see that the number is bigger for job offers than the actual interviews itself because multiple people are getting multiple interviews and job offers as well. So I'm going to introduce our new Patriot Employment Director. I'm just going to read the small bio, not his whole bio. Um, Nick is a community builder, economic developer, and entrepreneur who has worked in and around the entrepreneurial ecosystem for more than 14 years. Nick is also a Mustang civ uh, Civil Affairs Officer in the United States Army Reserve, where his community of service includes earning the rank of Staff Sergeant before attending Officer Candidate School, where he is commissioned as an Engineer Officer before transferring to Civilian Affairs. He now holds the rank of Major after 23 years of service and is planning to retire at the end of 2023. Thanks, Jeremy. I really didn't expect that much of an intro. Where's all my Army veterans at out there? Yeah. That's the on, school. All right, well, as Jeremy mentioned, uh, first I want to thank the team up here for allowing me to come and crash their party a little bit on the employment side. But thank you for the, the warm introduction. Thank you all for attending this morning. Uh, as he mentioned, I'm the, the director of Patriot Boot Camp, one of our newest programs here at the DAV, many of which, many of you probably haven't even heard of the program. Um, although, if you attended yesterday's business session, you probably saw Chef Robert Irvine up there talking about Patriot Boot Camp, and I thought that was pretty exciting. Anybody else think that was exciting? Yeah, yeah. So, what is Patriot Boot Camp? Some of you, uh, as you came by the table over the last couple of days, uh, knees were rattling, thinking we we're going to send you away off to another boot camp, but it's not quite that rigorous. Um, so this program is really for the veteran entrepreneur or the spouse entrepreneur. So I want to make that clear. We really want to support veterans and their spouses. So make sure you get the word out. But the, the program is really quite simple. Um, if you are an aspiring entrepreneur who is currently in business and your business, you are really looking to grow, this is the place to, be, to come and get a trans, go through a transformative program where um, you get access to education. And I think the most important part is mentorship um, and, and access to uh, other information and workshops, panel discussions about all the various topics that can help build you as a better business owner. So we all know that business owners, if you decide you're an entrepreneur and you have something to offer, whether that be service or a product, you're typically the best part, of, you're, you're typically that, that service or that product. But the one thing that most entrepreneurs struggle in is all the other stuff, right? All the accounting and all the, just the business understanding, the planning, all that aspect. So this is a great program to build upon those skills and take those with you into the future. Um, it's also a program that allows uh, that entrepreneur access to those who are investors, those who know about taking investment, those who can advise you and guide you in the investment scheme as you move forward in your business, if that's your thing, because it, it ne isn't necessarily every veteran's uh, next step. But in, if you are also a business owner and you're, you know, a, a, in your local community and you're looking for other resources, you may come across a term that is referred to as incubator. So you might see that out in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. You can associate DAV Patriot Bootcamp with an incubator program, meaning you're in business, we take your program, we warm it up in, in, a, in, a, in a nice, snuggly environment, give you the tools and the resources and the nurturing that you need uh, to take the next step, to grow your business. Our team, you guys already know my ugly mug now by this point, so a couple other folks on our team, Tammy Mathis, she's our program coordinator, um, and if you ever get involved with the program, you, you will, will most certainly know of Tammy Mathis. She will contact you. Uh, about pretty much anything that goes on with the program. And then Sherry Rice, who is uh, at this particular juncture uh, a consultant of ours, but what's interesting about Sherry is uh, she was part of the founding uh, crew of Patriot Boot Camp, which was its own standalone charity prior to DAV acquiring the program in 2022. So she has a lot of historical uh, knowledge that she brings to the table about the formation, you know, the do's and the don'ts. Uh, about the program, and so she's a, a, a nice advisor that's a, a, an addition to our team for the, for the duration of time. Couple interesting history, uh, impacts. So, I, I, I know these are kind of small, I didn't realize they'd be so small, sorry, but uh, um, we've had, uh, at, 
To our greatest ability to track participants from one charity to the next, we've had 971 participating entrepreneurs over the last 12 years. Um, we typically run our boot camps three, maybe four boot camps per year, depending on sponsorships and, and um, opportunities and, and, of course, interest. Uh, so that's a large number uh, when you think of a cohort of 50 every year. So. 441 expert mentors, and this, again, I mentioned is a very good strength of the program. So while we have, uh, we may have a cohort of 50 participating businesses, we also like to match it up with a 50 participant, uh, participants of mentors. So that's a, a major component of the program. So if you are a business owner <clears throat> and you have some knowledge that you'd like to share, you can do so by getting involved with uh, DAV Patriot Bootcamp. 7,200 hours of mentorship, that's just an estimation. I'm sure it's way beyond that when you consider that lasting relationships are formed through the boot camp and they continue mentorship into the future uh, with the people they meet there. 21% female participation, very happy about this number and, and actually our last co cohort was 49% female. So that's, we're getting out, we wanna, we wanna attract more female entrepreneurs. 80%, what is that, 82%? It's too small for me to read, that's how small it is. 82% identify as a service-connected disabled vet, and again, I think that's low-balling this number. 52% um, racially diverse, and what I really mean by that is all other ethnic groups combined outside of Caucasian and those who don't identify include 52%. So that's a huge statistic, blowing out uh, any other um, inclusion st statistic that you could even assign to us. And then again, 971 per city entrepreneurs, I think that's a typo. I think it's really supposed to say 170 million in capital raised for the businesses that has participated in Patriot Boot Camp over the last 12 years. And again, I think that number is extremely low when you look at reality, but that's, you know, that's a measure, uh, one of the many different measures that we use to, to show progress in the, in the program. And of course, we have many more statistics. If you want to talk about those, I'll be at the booth, come find me. So what are some ways that you can help? Um, obviously, if you are a participant, I think that's why, if you're, if you're someone who has, is, a, is an entrepreneur, is in business with an idea, it's a competitive process, so you would submit an application, we'd love to have you do that, uh, and, and with the hopes of participating in a Patriot Boot Camp. But aside from that, we all know a business owner, uh, or, or someone who's aspiring to be a business owner, so I think that's a good plug, and so share that with your networks, with your chapters, with your friends, family, et cetera, um, to get more people into the program as we build this. And if you're an experienced entrepreneur, as I mentioned earlier, we'd love for you to consider being coming a mentor. Um, that means different things to different people, but we would love at least to have that conversation and to put you on our mailing list at a minimum. So uh, please uh, connect with us on that. If you're looking to give back, I mean, we're always looking for sponsorships. I know it's a shameless plug, but nonetheless, if you have a business or if you're interested in investing your resources in, in this mission, uh, we'd be happy to discuss that with you as well. Um, if you're interested in growing your business in a different capacity, you can become a sponsor. We have lots of interesting opportunities that we can get creative, honestly. We can, we can, we can create whatever you want if you want to show that support. And then if you're like-minded and, and, and you just want to become a partner in any other way, Again, I don't even have any specific examples. We'd love to partner any way we can and, and work with that uh, with you. And if you're alumni, we want to hire veterans. So if, for those of, who have gone through the program in the past, I shuffle, you know, I make introductions to Ryan and his team to continue their engagement with DAV and growing their business through the, the hiring of veterans. And I think that's going to wrap me up for today, that I, that how did I do on time? I think we did well. So I know there's a bunch of questions that are burning a hole in you. So I would, as a reminder, the mic is up here. We'd love for you to come ask us some questions. I see some people getting up. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your time and attention today. Good morning. Good morning. Marty Penock, South Dakota. I've, uh, I see that we have the veteran advantage guide to hiring veterans uh, for employers. Um, I take questions once in a while from veterans that have experienced uh, discrimination, ADA violations. Can you expand on that and what resources we have from a DAV perspective on how to address veterans that 
have experience on. Thank you. <clears throat> From a, a, a DAV perspective, um, and we have the resources to point people in the right direction. However, we don't directly represent them to file um, different lawsuits and things of that nature. Um, however, I can invite uh, Julian up to speak a little bit more on that. Uh, sure. So, well, there's a couple of different aspects that we could address with that. So first, within the VETS agency itself, um, as I mentioned, there's the Uniform Services Employment and Reemployment uh, Act, uh, Rights Act. And what that does, that provides anti-discrimination protections for those who served in the workforce. So if it is an organization that is discriminated against someone because of their service or current affiliation or past affiliation, we will investigate that, find out if there's any merit, and then the uh, U.S. government can represent you in court if it goes to that level. Uh, we do try to mitigate those cases so it doesn't go to court between the employee and the employer. But worst case scenario, we do pass it on to the Department of Justice. You also mentioned the ADA. Uh, we also have some lawyers within the Department of Labor outside of VETS that can help and support any claims that someone has in regards to violations against the Americans with Disabilities Act. Jack Hansen, South Dakota. This is for Julian and the Major. So uh, I understand that you have never been in the service. So I have to say to that, we are Army strong. <laughs> yeah. But yes, we appreciate the comment. <laughs> I do have to add to that. Although we stand up here and say the Army is the best service, I honestly can say I appreciate each and every branch of service as I've worked with all of you. So. Can't, can't do it alone. So. This is not a question, it's just a statement. What works for us is that 10 reasons why you hire a veteran, hard copy, and we give that to any businesses, and I think that's very important. I don't know if you, uh, uh, you know, qualify for or saying that, but uh, that's so important, the hard copy, to give to the business. 10 reasons why we should hire a vet, and it works for us. I appreciate that, thank you. Stan Kokevich, uh, Chapter 44, Department of Wisconsin. Uh, I was a DVOP for nine years and uh, LVR for 13. Recently retired from the state of Wisconsin. But anyway, back when we had the Hire Vets First campaign, there were 52 buses in the city of Milwaukee with Hire Vets First. And I had, uh, did not have the need to know where the money came from for that, even though my phone number was on the back of the bus. But anyway, <laughs> why don't doesn't vets put uh, advertising money into the uh, grant for the DBOP LVR positions? So that's a great question. And to your point, we do have some really talented folks in those two positions. One thing that we are running up against, uh, and I think a lot of departments are running up against this right now, is just constraints with budget. And so sometimes we have to prioritize where we are putting our funding and while we are rolling out with new initiatives to fill gaps, personnel is always a key aspect of how we do our service delivery. So make sure we have the right personnel in the right place is always important. But obviously with these state grants, we do leave it up to some degree of the state on who they hire and uh, the qualifications of those individuals. But we do work very closely to ensure that they are using the right metrics and spreading the word about these key positions. Hi, I'm uh, Glenn Prater. I started a, a Chapter 66 with Larry. I started a disabled veteran food truck business here in Atlantic City. Uh, but at this point, I'd rather be a mentor, you know, to help uh, other veterans in that way. So I'm trying to figure what programs do you offer that can help me being a mentor for my business. That's our Patriot Boot Camp. So just come talk to me when we get done. We, right. we can set you up, okay? And by the way, for uh, the DAV app, if you in this instance, if you're interested in becoming a mentor, if you go inside the DAV app, you'll see a, I guess it's a sub app for DAV Patriot Bootcamp, and you can click on it, and there is, is a link in there to sign up with a mentor application and or uh, subscribe to our mailing list. 
Yeah, Bob Casher, uh, the Great Commonwealth of Kentucky, Chapter 3 in Elizabeth Tomic. It's a scenario with a question. Uh, small Town USA has a small construction business, and they hire, they do hire veterans. How can they get into this program to get into some of these job fairs when they're having a critical time hiring experienced heavy equipment operators? So if they are interested in attending a job fair, all they need to do is reach out to us. So the, right when you visit our page, jobs.dav.org, the very first link that's on there is to, to email us directly and speak with us in reference to that. Does the owner of the company have to need to be a veteran in order to qualify to get into the program? No, they do okay. not. That was my question. Thank you. Thanks for being here, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, Gary Brewer, Chapter 169, Victoria, Texas. As a service officer, I sometimes come across the young guys just getting out that don't really have a lot of experience in interviewing. They get prepared for an interview, have never been through a job interview, don't know how to set up their resume, et cetera. Is there some type of resource that you can help them before they attend these job fairs? There is, there is. So on, on our page again, it's a plug again, jobs.dav.org. So at the very bottom, there is uh, mentorship opportunities where companies give a free hour to veterans to be mentored, whether that's help me build my res resume, help me build my LinkedIn profile, interview tactics. And then also with our, with our corporate partner, Recruit Military, they've got, they hold webinars as well and they work with individuals and call one-on-one -on -one veterans to and spouses to speak with them and make sure their resume is squared away just to give them the tools and equip them better for job fairs. Jeff Whitnaven, uh, Chapter 9, Department of Ohio. I was a DBOP also, and uh, one of the things that we used to, or that we talked to the veterans about was to let them know about WOTC, W-O-T-C, it's the Work Opportunity Tax Credit, and employers who hire veterans are eligible for a $9,600 tax break. So it's just, it's, and, and I also tell them, hey, when you go in for an interview, they might ask you, Hey, tell us the reason why we should hire you over everybody else out in the waiting room. One reason is I'm a veteran. Veterans are honest, we're dependable, we're loyal, we show up to work on time, and we don't mind staying until the job gets done. And the second reason why is because if you hire me, you qualify for the tax break through WOTC, and that doesn't mean you can hire me today, take the credit tomorrow, and let me go on a third day. You have to keep me employed for 180 days. So if we have any employers here, Hire a veteran. Thank you. Thank you. You know, and just to kind of reiterate on that topic, I mean, I think education is key. That's why we do meet with employers on a consistent basis, and we talk about the Veteran Advantage, our hiring guide. And we, through education, we're able to make these employers realize just how important it is to hire veterans. Because I mean, again, that that is a vitally, vitally important topic. Is there, do we have any additional questions? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ellenville, uh, Chapter 57, Wisconsin. Uh, this is really directed towards a uh, re uh, recruit military. Uh, Pre-pandemic, uh, recruit, recruit military would have uh, job fairs in Milwaukee. Post-pandemic, we have not had any. We would hope that they would reconsider uh, scheduling them back again, and we'd be more than willing to work with them to ensure that they would be successful. So, thank you. For sure, so I mean, um, in the event that a job fair is not in your area, that's the exact reason why there is virtual events. We can't be everywhere all at once, so in order to accommodate the more rural locations and to accommodate the veterans who can't attend our job fairs, that's why we have the virtual events, who again are, it's an awesome environment. I encourage everyone, if you have not seen it, even if you're not looking for a job, if you already have a job, I mean, the best time to find a job is when you already have one, right? So even if you don't have a job, whatever it might be, just explore the environment, see how awesome these virtual events are. Ryan, thanks. Stan Gano, Department of Washington, member of the Employment Committee, thank God. Um, no, really, it's, it's a great program. Can I give us a little shameless plug? Stop by the booth if you're a service officer. Obviously, everybody's touching base with vets. A lot of them need jobs. A lot of them want to work. Spouses transitioning. Some of them even want to move on to a different job. 
pick up some cards, have it on your desk, have a couple with you. It's got the website on there, jobs.dav.org. It's easy, just hand it to them, and it's a big help. So promote, 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 please. Thank you. Thank you. We've, we've, got a, we've got a lot of information there also, not just some free stuff for everybody to grab. So come get us some education also at our table. Dave Felton, Wisconsin. I understand you want to promote. I understand you want to grow. Milwaukee's not a rural city, okay? <laughs> what are you guys doing to dispel the D in front of disabled American veteran? Because still out there, Right now, employers are really striving to get people. It's really hard. But before pandemic, disabled American veterans told the employer, you're disabled. So how are you changing that stigma? So again, that's where our hiring guide comes in the mix. We use real world examples uh, from real companies, real veterans, and explain things like a work opportunity tax credit. We explain, you know, the, everything that a veteran, whenever you hire a veteran, all the pros that you're getting. You know, a lot of these employers are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on an annual basis just to train the, the employees that they already have to be good leaders in the organization. So through this guide, we, we explain to them that, hey, you know, you're not having to spend all this money to, to get a leader in your organization. You have somebody already, fresh, brand new, that is born leader, that's what they're supposed to be. So through our hiring guide, if, if anybody hasn't taken a look at it, I encourage everybody to visit jobs.dav.org and take a review of that hiring guide, because that's an awesome piece of uh, literature to take a look at. So, so I want to address the last question, because I, I mentioned that a little bit in my remarks. And, you know, just because, you know, this is disabled American veterans, it doesn't mean we're broken American veterans. You know, yeah. So it, it takes all of us here to speak to what Ryan said, that we have to educate and inform people that this is a great business decision for employers to hire veterans. They're leaders, they're resilient, they get the job done. Not everybody else out there in that workforce can do it that way. So we're going to continue to tell that narrative here in VETS. We know DAV is going to tell that story. And so we're encouraging everybody else out there to spread that message to employers. Good morning, Ed Rivera's Department of Rhode Island. So when you guys travel in person to do these job fairs, are you self-contained unit? You come out of here, you got your stuff, you got your marketing, all the stuff that's going to be done at the event, and you appear at the event and conduct your business. Do you notify the state departments throughout the country that you're going to have these fairs rather than post it on a website? So I gotta go play with the click, click, click. Do you have a notification ability via email to our adjutants or, you know, we all have those lists. Do you tell us that you're coming and, uh, then create maybe an opportunity for us to come visit with you, not to distract you, but to offer a supplemental help. So again, I, I, mean, I hate to plug the click, click, click again. However, that is how we can reach the most amount of people in the quickest amount of time is through all of our social media handles and, and everything of that nature. So every almost a few times a week, there's posts that go up to inform everyone of our location. However, we always encourage any any department or any chapter that if our job fair is in your area, please reach out to us. Let us know that you're that you're going to be coming. Yes, you know? that's my question. How do I do? I just keep scanning your your calendar. Well, honestly, you calendar. would only have to do a scan one time because we've got the complete list of all of our job fairs throughout the entire year located there. So okay. you you can look in January and find a job fair in December. And you can notify us right when you read it in December or in January and say, hey, you know, Ryan, I would like to come to this job fair. Just see what it's about. You know, see, see the, the amount of veterans that you're having, spouses that you're helping. And we'd be more than happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rodney Bones, Michigan, uh, Army Strong. Oh. Uh, I think we need to really go ahead and, and try this more of a statement empower service officers to notify because you'll be amazed at the number 
of veterans who don't want to file disability claims because of the job that they currently have. Because they think they're going to be, they think something's going to happen to them, and I get it with law enforcement, personnel, veterans, uh, mainly law enforcement, to be honest with you. But a lot of them, they say, well, I got a great job, and if I file a disability claim, especially when that disability claim deals with PTSD, they think they're going to be discriminated against, so they think something's going to happen. And then my, my retort to that is, the bottom line is, You've been doing your job for 8, 10, 12, 15 years. You haven't had an issue based on your, on your disability. Only thing you're doing now is getting that disability recognized by the VA. So if, if your job decides to discriminate against you now, you have every right to follow up some, some type of, you know, get legal assistance or whatever. So we just got to get the word out to veterans that it's okay to file a claim and not be discriminated against when you do it, especially when you're already employed. For sure, and I think education is the biggest is the biggest um, thing that needs to happen. Educate the the veteran or the spouse about the importance of filing disability claims. I mean, DAV. I mean, whether that's why we're such a prolific service organization, it's because we we are the subject matter experts. Um, but then also educating employers as well, so they understand that hey, you know, I'm uh, I'm I'm disabled. I'm not broken, like, like Julian had indicated. So I think that's vitally important. Um, I understand there is one more question. We are going to wrap up. We can talk some more up here. There's another seminar that is incoming, but we can talk some more offline up here. But again, thank you for everybody's time. Please visit jobs.dav.org. Our contact information is on the screen up here, and you can reach out to us. Thank you.